Okay, so I read a lot. I read for work, I read for fun, I read to help me put ideas together and better understand the world. In a good year, I'll read more than 80 books, and that's on top of having a demanding job, a small child, and piano, jiu-jitsu, and strength training habits to maintain. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my best advice for reading more. It's all timestamped below, so feel free to skip around, but otherwise, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so tip number one for reading more is to be ruthless. Lots of books are bad, and one of the keys to reading more of them is accepting when something isn't as good as you thought it was going to be, and just move on from there. There's a bit of sunk cost fallacy going on here, because if you're trying to read 100 books a year, and you've hit a rough patch in one that you really don't like, and you're not getting very much from, it's tempting to try and push on through. But what is actually going to happen is you're going to slow down and not pick up the book. So quite often in that scenario, it's better to just ditch it, move on, and find a book you really like. A kind of related factor is that a huge amount of the kind of pop science books that I really like, and in many cases would recommend, have a lot of extraneous information in them. This is usually because they've got a great central point to make, but they can't quite pad it out to like what is usually considered book length, or about 300 pages. I call this the Gladwell effect, and it's really obvious once you start looking for it. For every like hard fact or bit of advice, there's a really extended description of someone's jacket or what their office looks like. And when that happens, I don't suggest you skip pages because you might miss something genuinely useful. But I do think it's legitimate to not concentrate on those bits quite as hard as you do on the useful parts of the book. So if you're reading a book that turns out to be bad, I think after you've given it about 50 pages, you can legitimately just bin it. If you're reading a book that's good, but with bad parts, just skim read those parts. Don't skip pages, but get through it. Okay, tip number two for reading more is to read a broad range of things and, crucially, to read more than one book at a time. So firstly, it's important to mix up what you're reading. If you're reading one self-improvement book after another, then you're going to end up with more new habits and plans than you can possibly action in one go. And if you're reading one amazing classic novel after another, then you never really get to sit and digest any of them. So that's important, but also I usually have at least two and sometimes as many as four books on the go at any one time. And that's usually a mixture of fiction and non-fiction, like hardcore science and easier pop science stuff, or like an easy novel and then something classic and quite dense. If I'm too tired to really concentrate on the flow of the language in like some classic piece of Greek literature, then I can zip through a nice little Kurt Vonnegut novella. Or if I'm really bored with a dense science book that I'm reading, then I can read something that's much more simple and designed and written to be accessible. By the way, one really useful tip I got from Tim Ferriss is to read non-fiction in the morning and then fiction at night. I find that non-fiction gets you really buzzing with ideas and plans and like new strategies for stuff to do, and that's not great if you want to sleep, whereas fiction is a great way to kind of shut off at the end of the day and wind down. And while I'm talking about this, I think it's super important to read fiction. The trap that I fell into in my early 20s was thinking that anything that wasn't giving me actionable insights or information was kind of a waste of time. But fiction is amazing for giving you empathy and new perspectives on the world, and it can bring ideas to life in a way that non-fiction just can't. So read a mix, read challenging stuff and easy stuff, read classics and new books, read really well-established science and the cutting edge that's just come out this week, and definitely read a mix of fiction and non-fiction. And that brings us to... Okay, tip number three for reading more is to read in a variety of formats. I see a lot of YouTube creators recommend reading on Kindle, and don't get me wrong, I love the Kindle. I love the fact that you can read it one-handed or in the dark, and I think that the fact that you can highlight on it is super important and helpful for going back and finding things that you might have forgotten. But I also think it's super helpful to have like a reading app on your phone, because there are situations where you're not necessarily going to have your Kindle on hand, like you're just waiting in the queue for a coffee, or you're waiting to meet a friend in a bar and you didn't expect them to be late, where you can get a little bit of reading done, and you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And I wouldn't recommend reading on your phone for like a classic work of literature or a book you're really into, but if it's just some like pop science book that you're trying to get some quick, actionable, sharp insights from, there's absolutely nothing wrong with reading on your phone. Bump up the point size so you don't strain your eyes and get to it. If you're not as interested in immersing yourself in the book as you are in getting the information that's inside it, reading on your phone is completely fine. And on the flip side of that, I really recommend you to read physical books occasionally because there's something about the kind of weight and feel of reading a physical book that's really hard to replicate in any other way. I find it's a lot easier to get lost in a book when it's not on some kind of digital format, like it's the only thing you have, you can throw your phone to the other side of the room, settle down in an armchair and get to some serious reading. And so I tend to do this with fiction because I don't tend to want to highlight it as much, but even then, if I want to come back to a passage, I'll just dog ear the page at the bottom, 
maybe come back to it and snap a photo of it later. And then like if I find a turn of phrase that I really love, then I know it's there and I can come back to it. So read on your phone, read on a Kindle, read physical books. Just do whatever you can to keep a book within arm's reach of yourself at all times. Okay, tip number four is to make every day a non-zero day. So there are a lot of people who will tell you to make a goal of hitting a specific number of pages a day, whether that's 10, 20, 30, 50 or whatever. And that's fine, that works, but when you're trying to build the habit of reading, it can be a little bit intimidating to go in and go, okay, I have to read 20 pages a day. So you tell yourself you'll wait until you can really commit and then you'll never have that time and you'll get discouraged and you won't build the habit. So what I think is much more valuable is to aim to make every day a non-zero day, which just means that you're gonna to aim to read some of the book you're reading in a day. And it doesn't matter how much that is, that could be 10 pages, it could be one page, it could be one paragraph. What's important is that you build the habit of opening the book and getting some reading done. And there are two reasons for this. Firstly, as long as you're making some forward progress, it doesn't matter how small it is, you will eventually get where you're going. If you're reading one page of a book a day, you are still gonna finish a book by the end of the year. If you're reading no pages, you're never gonna read anything. And secondly, it just builds the habit of opening a book every day. Because obviously, by the time you've actually gone to the trouble of grabbing your Kindle, opening it, and reading a paragraph, you're probably not gonna stop at that paragraph. You're probably gonna get some more done. So some people try and make a streak of non-zero days. I don't really worry about my streak, but I do try and make it a priority to never have two zero days in a row. So sometimes there might be a day when everything gets on top of me, just family work, everything, and I don't even touch a book. And what I do in those days is I make sure that the next day, the very first thing is I get some reading done. Get rid of zero days. Okay, so my next tip is to make reading part of your routine. Obviously, anything you actually make time for in your day gets done, and anything you tell yourself you're gonna get around to usually doesn't. So you need to have a part, or preferably a few parts of your day where you're gonna sit down and read. So for me, this used to be my commute, my automatic behavior whenever I got on the tube in the morning or at night was I would crack open a book and get a good chunk of reading done for the 15, 20 minutes I was on the train. Now I don't commute anymore, so instead my reading time is first thing in the morning. I get up at about six, I make my boy some oats, and then I sit down and crack open a book while he like eats them or watches cartoons. And the earlier in the morning you can make your reading time, I think the better, because it gets you on a good path for the day. It makes it more likely that you're gonna to wanna to read more of the book later as you get into it and kind of embrace the ideas that are in it. It makes it less likely that being tired or other things getting in the way are gonna put you off. So the key here is to do anything you can to build this habit and make reading the easiest thing to do in any specific situation. A great way to do this is to keep your Kindle or a physical book besides the bed, but not have like your phone or a laptop or any other way of connecting to the internet by that. I'm exactly as bad as everyone else at frittering away the last hour of the evening on the internet or getting up in the morning and checking social media straight away. So if I take those options away from myself in advance, I find it a lot easier to do what I actually want to do, which is to read books. It's not about relying on willpower, it's about making the thing you want to do easier and the thing you don't want to do harder. It's about adding friction to the thing that you know is kind of bad. At first, not checking your phone as soon as you wake up or last thing at night is going to feel like kind of a wrench, but eventually it's just going to become an automatic habit and you're going to wonder why you ever did anything else. So my last bit of advice is to make reading your default activity. So this is kind of a combination of everything else, but it's also your ultimate aim. I used to read a ton of books as a kid because quite honestly, most of the time I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have a games console until I was about 17. Obviously I didn't have any kind of mobile phone because I'm old. So I just carried a book around and read all the time. And obviously now I'm no different from anyone else in that I have a magical supercomputer in my pocket that will keep me entertained for every moment of the day if I ask it to. And in modern life, you never really have to be bored if you don't want to be. So the real trick is to make reading the activity that you do when you're bored for a few seconds. Whether that's like you're eating your breakfast, you're waiting for the kettle to boil, you're waiting for a friend who's been late for five minutes, somebody else is arguing with a barista, whatever. You probably already read thousands of words a day, whether those are on Twitter, in YouTube comment threads, whatever they are. The trick is to switch the words that you're passively consuming to ones that you're actively choosing to read, because those are the ones that are gonna improve your life. Read words that authors have slaved over and that millions of other people have loved and that could make a huge difference to the way you see the world and your place in it rather than some hot takes on Twitter. And that's it. 
That's my best advice on how to read a whole bunch more books than you do right now. The number's not important. Don't get hung up on reading a book a week or a hundred books a year because what that'll do is encourage you to ignore books that you otherwise should read, like difficult books, long books, things like that. Guys, if you have any reading tips I've missed, if you have any other questions, if you would like to know what I read, if you would like to tell me about a book you think I should read, please hit me up in the comments. I read them all and I do try to reply to them. Please like and subscribe. And until the next one, good reading.